Hi, in this lecture, I'll be explaining the VITAS and the VITAS HLS flows in more details uh, using the FIR filter uh, as the example. The learning objective of this lecture is to be able to explain the difference between the VITAS and the VITAS HLS flows. Uh, then we'll be making a VITAS project from a VITAS HLS project uh, using the FIR filter example. Remember we made two projects so far, uh, one was for the uh, Hello World and the other one uh, was for the FIR filter. For the Hello World project, uh, we used the uh, VITAS flow. Uh, the purpose of the VITAS flow uh, was to run a kernel on board. So when you're making a test bench on VITAS, uh, it should describe the CPU behavior, uh, manage PCIe transfer and the device memory and uh, start device computation. And of course, uh, since this is a test bench, uh, it should check the correctness of the output data given certain input data. Also, um, we typed everything into the Linux console, so we use the command line mode. Um, now let's think about the VITAS HLS flow, uh, you know, the GUI mode we use to make the FIR project. Um, similar to the VITAS test bench, uh, VITAS HLS test bench should also check the correctness of the output data given certain input data. But the difference is that uh, you're free to choose the components outside the kernel. Uh, you may assume that there is a CPU outside the kernel, or you may also assume that there's another kernel uh, communicating with the kernel under test. Uh, you may also assume that there is an external memory, uh, BRAM, uh, FIFO, or XE interface. Um, so as long as you're providing all the input to the kernel and making sure the output is correct, uh, you can add or remove any components uh, you want to test. So you can see that the VITAS HLS flow has much more flexibility uh, than the VITAS flow and uh, this flow is typically easier to follow uh, if you're in the initial stage of development. Now let's compare the execution modes in VITAS and VITAS HLS. If you want to check the correctness of your algorithm, uh, you can run C simulation on VITAS HLS. A similar flow is the uh, software emulation on VITAS. Uh, you can do this by typing make run target software emulation uh, device AWS platform. If you want to test in register transfer level, uh, you can run code simulation uh, on Vitus HLS or run hardware emulation on Vitus. And uh, if you want to uh, build this stream for the onboard execution, uh, you can run uh, make all uh, target hardware on Vitus. All right. Uh, also, I want to mention that the, all three uh, Vitus flows use the host execution file. Um, so if you're just recompiling the host file for onboard execution, you don't need to go through the lengthy uh, target hardware uh, flow. Uh, you can simply run software emulation and use the host execution file for the onboard execution as well. Now, before moving on, uh, I want to make one clarification uh, just in case I give you some kind of misconception. Uh, we have used the command line mode for VITAS flow and the GUI mode for the VITAS HLS flow, but that's not the only way to use them. In fact, you can use the GUI mode for the VITAS flow and the command line mode for the VITAS HLS flow. Let's first check how to use command line mode for VITAS HLS. After you make a project in VITAS HLS GUI, uh, you see that it has generated a file named script.tcl. Go ahead and open that file. In the file, uh, you see the information uh, we have put in using the GUI mode. That is, um, it has the project name, uh, the 
um, design files we have added, uh, the test bench file, and the solution name, and the FPJ component um, that we are using. And we also specify the clock period and the clock uncertainty. Uh, you can specify a separate file um, that has the directives, but uh, for our class, uh, let's simply add compiler directives directly to the source file. Um, then you can perform uh, various tasks. Uh, you can run C simulation, uh, synthesize the design, or run code simulation. Uh, the last line exports the design into an IP format uh, that can be understood by Vitex Flow. Uh, please read the Vitex HLS user guide uh, if you want to know more details about these commands. Now, uh, if you have chosen to run this script in command line, uh, you can run uh, as it is, um, or you could leave this uh, upper part and uh, synthesize the uh, design line. Um, the rest of the code you can comment out if you don't want to run like a CSIM or the COSIM. Uh, you can type vitus hls uh, f uh, script uh, tcl in the command line and uh, you can run vitus hls uh, without running the GUI mode. Now for vitus, uh, you can not only use the command line mode but also use the GUI mode. Uh, please try uh, typing Vitus uh, in your Linux console and uh, Vitus IDE GUI uh, will pop up as a default. So basically the message I want to get across is that Vitus and Vitus HLS offer both the command line and the GUI mode. And uh, you can choose whichever mode that's uh, more convenient for you. All right, now let's think about which flow to use in FPJ HLS design development. When you're first making a design, it's easier to go with the Vitus HLS flow because you can make and test the kernel only. You can even do a unit test of your submodules. And uh, when you're certain that your kernel is working correctly, uh, then you can use the Vitus flow. Um, you can incrementally add description or onboard execution. So for the rest of this uh, lecture, I'm going to explain how to port a Vitus HLS project to a Vitus project. So let's make a Vitus project from a Vitus HLS project. Vitus HLS flow only tests the kernel, uh, so its test bench only needs to test the output uh, given certain input. But uh, since Vitus flow uh, targets onboard execution, uh, its test bench needs to do several more things. Uh, in addition to testing input and output, uh, we need to make the PCIe transfer and uh, invoke the kernel on the CPU side and uh, manage uh, memory objects on the device side. So let's practice adding these routines uh, with our FIR project. What I'm going to do is uh, start with the hello world vector add project and replace the code to that of FIR project uh, one by one. Uh, please go to the uh, Vitus examples directory and uh, copy the hello world project directory into a new directory named FIR on board. Uh, go to that directory and edit the make file. Uh, look for common repository and edit the directory name to uh, FIR on board. Uh, then you can close the make file. Now let's edit the host file. Open the file named host.cpp, uh, then go to the section of the code that creates the test data for vector add. You can delete that routine and instead copy and paste the code from our test bench file, uh, fir this test .cvp, that reads the test data for fir. Then let's make memory objects or buffers. Uh, buffers are going to be allocated in the device memory. For vector add, um, we needed two buffers for input and one buffer for output, but uh, for fir, uh, we need 
one buffer for the input and uh, one buffer for the output. So um, go ahead and delete the memory objects for vector add and add in the ones for the FIR. Uh, next, uh, set the top kernel file arguments uh, in the order they appear. Uh, the first one is the uh, Y output and the second one is the uh, X input. The next routine uh, transfers data from the host memory uh, to the device memory, uh, launch the kernel, uh, and then uh, transfers data back from the device memory to the host memory. Uh, just make sure that uh, you change the buffer names properly to that of the FIR. Also, um, if you don't like the old uh, kernel variable name, uh, go ahead and change that as well. Um, in some cases, you might want to report the execution time of your FPGA kernel. Um, OpenCL provides an API of measuring the current clock, uh, which is a kernel steady clock now. Uh, you can put it before and after the enqueue task uh, function. Uh, then the subtract these two variables here. Um, the execution time will be in uh, nanoseconds. So um, you can multiply by uh, 10 to the power of nine and then uh, print out the FPGA kernel execution time. Uh, one thing you have to be careful with, uh, in queuing a task does not mean that the task will be executed right away. So even after in queuing a PCI transfer with this API, uh, we can't be sure if it has finished at this point. Uh, that's why I put a queue.finish here um, it means that wait until the task in an OpenCL queue has been executed. Uh, I just want to make sure that the PCIe transfer has finished uh, at this point before I measure the kernel start time. Um, same reason, uh, I put the queue.finish before measuring the kernel end time, right? Uh, because I want to wait until the kernel has finished execution. Make sense? Okay. Finally, uh, copy and paste the output test routine uh, from the FIR test bench file. Uh, we're going to write the output to a file uh, and compare the content to the golden output and uh, make sure the output is the same. So um, now we are done with the host file. Uh, you can save and close it. Next, let's look at the kernel file. Uh, you can copy and paste the kernel you made in the last lecture, uh, but you need to make a few changes though. Uh, first, uh, change the kernel name to VADD. Uh, the reason is that we're editing the Hello World project, uh, which has the kernel name of VADD. And uh, since we haven't changed the name, uh, we need to keep the old kernel name. Uh, second, uh, put extern C around the top function, um, top function only. So uh, even if you have multiple functions, there's no need to put extern C on other functions. Uh, third, uh, if your output Y and input X are in an array type, uh, please change them to the pointer types. And uh, also add Progmas uh, to define the interface with the external memory. Uh, for both variables, uh, we'll be using the AXI bus interface on F1. Uh, we also have to specify a bundle. Um, I'll explain what it is when I'm explaining the F1 external memory architecture in uh, later lectures. Uh, but for now, uh, please give any arbitrary name like a GMEM0 or GMEM1. Uh, finally, um, if you want to run this module back in the Vitus HLS flow, uh, you might want to specify the size of the allocated memory for pointers Y and X uh, using the keyword depth. 
Uh, this is because Vitus HLS tool currently has a limitation of requiring the programmers to exactly specify the size of the allocated memory when running the CoSIM. So um, if you're not going to run CoSIM on this module uh, on the Vitus HLS, uh, this step is not necessary. So um, after making these changes, uh, the kernel file uh, can be synthesized for the Vitus flow. To make further customization, uh, you probably want to read the make file. You can change the compile flags or change the host file name, um, executable name, or the kernel files uh, being synthesized. Um, you can make other changes as well, so feel free to test around with the make file if you want. When you're finished modifying the make file, host file, and the kernel file, uh, please copy the uh, fir.h header file and all the data files uh, into our new directory. Uh, then please run simulations uh, to verify correctness. Uh, first the uh, software emulation uh, and then the hardware emulation. Uh, if both passes, uh, you can then uh, make the bit string and uh, make the AI file and the run on F1, uh, same as the Hello World example. Now you know how to create a new Vitus project. Uh, but every time you create a new project, uh, there's a chance that you might exceed your AWS SSD size. Um, if you have adequate funding, uh, you might consider using a larger SSD. If not, uh, you probably want to delete all your intermediate files after you're done with your project. Uh, you can delete all the files uh, except your uh, original source file, uh, host file, and the AFI. Um, please don't forget to delete some of the hidden directories uh, like the .run folder, uh, which could become gigabytes uh, if you run a hardware emulation. Also, some of the build directory uh, could become uh, easily become hundreds of megabytes. So um, please uh, delete them regularly uh, if you're running out of disk space. Let's look at the summary of today's lecture. In Vitus Flow, um, you need to set the onboard execution environment so it's more strict. Uh, in Vitus HLS Flow, uh, you don't have such constraints and uh, you have a higher freedom in testing kernels. And uh, we have practiced making a Vitus FIR project from a Vitus HLS FIR project uh, so that we can run uh, onboard execution. And uh, that's it for the FIR filter. Um, we'll go on to a new chapter in the next class.